Hello friends, Tanya here with a video for Trinity Stamps and today we're going to make some Mug of Thanks gift card holders. I recently went on a trip and wished I'd had a few of these gift card holders with me when I went. We're going to start out with a stencil that's an oldie but a goodie. This is called Waving Hello. It's a 6x9 layering stencil and you can see the laser etched images on each of the layers so you can easily line up the layers so they don't overlap or so the image is how it was intended. This is um, a fun stencil. It could look like confetti streamers. It could look like waves. It could look like abstract art. We're going for more of an abstract look today. I pulled out some fun dye inks. These happen to be the Concord 9th inks in ocean and sea glass. That's what we're going to start with. And I have these set up on the back of my Misty so I can use the magnets to hold the stencil in place while I am doing my inking. I've done the first two colors and now I've taken the stencil, lined it up with the original way that it was inked and then turned it 180 degrees and laid it back down to create another layer on this cardstock. This was buttercup ink and then I believe we're using marmalade. Nope, grapefruit. I think this is grapefruit. Anyway, it's a peachy pink orange color and we are going to do the same thing with the fourth layer. And we have one more layer we're going to add. I just took one of the stencils and shifted it to cover that larger area of white space that's left on the paper. We're going to use this Cosmic Shimmer Opal Glaze <clears throat> from my stash. And this is kind of a paste, sort of. It's really creamy and it creates this beautiful shimmer to your um, project. It's rather transparent so it works in a lot of different ways. I ultimately took some of this creamy paste and put it on a sponge dauber and or an ink blender and added a little water to my surface and picked that up and that thinned it out a little bit so I could put it through the stencil very easily. I did have to add a little bit more uh, a couple times to get the coverage I wanted on this stenciled background. This paper I am stenciling on is actually eight and a half by five and a half, so half of a regular sized piece of white cardstock. And I'm going to be making two different cards with this. I had thought I was going to make four, but I settled on two. Um, I actually was just playing with the stencil and <laughs> decided to go ahead and make this project. I love how that opal glaze created such a shimmery addition to this uh, design. Now I'm going to take the coffee, cu coffee mug card die set. This is another oldie book goodie. It has uh, just a few elements in the die set, but they work together beautifully. My plan is to add the design just to the front of this card. So I'm going to carefully tape down half of the die and the cut out for where the coffee would show through in the inside of the cup. So we've got our card bases. We've got two cups to cover the fronts. We have the insert that holds a gift card and now we can start adding some other details. I took some gathered twig distress oxide and added that to the card base front under the spot where the inset has been cut out of the designed piece of cardstock that's going to cover it so that you can see the coffee through that hole. I do have to keep readjusting or adding a little bit until I have that entire area covered. And for the second one, I'm going to be a little smarter and put a little masking tape over the crease so I don't get the uh, brown ink where I don't want it. I don't want it on the back of the card. If it ended up there, it wouldn't be the end of the world. Now back to the beginning of this voiceover when I said that I wished I'd had these on my trip. So we did travel by air on our vacation 
And oops, here we are using this Simply Sentimental Thanks Stamps and Dies. These are wonderful and they work for so many different projects and I am delighted to use that on these mugs. We're going to stamp these in VersaFine Claire Onyx or Nocturne ink and we're going to heat emboss them with some clear sparkly embossing powder. While you're watching me do that, let me tell you a little bit about the wish I had, had for these cards when I was on my vacation. We went to Mexico and we did fly and we had four legs to our trip total. I decided to thank the cabin crew, the pilots, the first officers, the gate attendants. All of these people have a pretty thankless job. Most people are either indifferent or mildly pleasant or downright rude. They, they don't get a lot of thanks for the hard work that they put in. And I decided to buy a bunch of um, inexpensive gift cards to give to them as I was passing through. And I have to tell you the impact that that made, I could see that it really made all of their day. It just made them smile a little brighter for the entire trip. We should all be thinking about the people who serve us so thanklessly every day in our lives. We all thank our teachers, our bus drivers, our postal workers. We don't rare, often thank our grocery store attendants, um, all kinds of other people. And the airline people are really suffering right now. So if you're going on a trip anytime soon, I would highly recommend getting a little gift, a little something to give to your crew at the airport. You'll make their day, I promise. I Back to the dies and stamps in this stamp and die set. I'm going to do some partial die cutting with this small rectangular die so that they fit with the little tiny sub sentiments. I plan on layering these on the front of the card and doing your partial die cutting really stretches a lot of these types of dies for so many different purposes. So one die can fit all of these different lengths of sentiment by just being creative when you're doing your die cutting. So we've got many thanks and thanks so much. Next we're going to take another of those sub sentiments from the Simply Sentimental Thanks stamp set and there aren't uh, not all of those sub sentiments will fit inside this card. However, they would if you trimmed them. You could cut them in half and have several layers. I decided to go with a very simple I appreciate you on the inside and that will work for just about anybody. I did try to take this longest one and put it in there, but it didn't fit and I didn't feel like trimming it today. I am not afraid to trim my sentiment dies, not at all. However, I just didn't feel like doing that today. So if we're going to take the card bases that we've die cut from some heavyweight cards, white card stock, and we're going to fold them in half and crease them well on the score lines that were made by the die. And we're going to make sure that our card front piece is trimmed correctly. I did have to take one of these and trim them with my guillotine trimmer just to get it nice and flush because I hadn't lined it up perfectly when I die cut it. Now I can lay these on top of the card front and I love how that brown coffee or tea or whatever kind of beverage you like peeks through that cutout inset. We're just going to add some precision glue. You could use whatever glue technique you like and add that to the card front. And I did put a heavyweight block over the top to help that adhere extra well and only for the amount of time I spent at adding glue to other components. Now for the gift card holding piece on the inside of the card, you don't want to put any glue behind those tabs because that will make it difficult for you to get your gift card inside of those little holders. And if you do it right, it holds them perfectly. Now, if you stretch those tabs out too much, then your gift card will slide right on out. This gift card holder will fit on either side of the inside of the card. 
I just prefer to have my sentiment showing on the side you see when you open it first and then add the gift card on the other side. I again put those under the heavy car, uh, heavy weight block so that would adhere nice and firmly to the card base. And I have taken the sentiments that I've die cut with their coordinating dies and added a little bit of dimension behind the back with some coaster blanks. I get this question every time. Coaster blanks are just simply a pulp board blank. I will have a link in the description box below for where you can find those. They aren't sold by Trinity Stamps, but they are a staple, staple in my stash and I get questions every time. <laughs> So you will find that link in the description box below. We have two different fonts of thanks here. I think they were both adorable and they both fit beautifully on this mug. And I have the sub sentiments on the same green cardstock as used on the inside of the card. As a last little detail on the card fronts, I am going to pull out these lovely latte baubles and adhere those to the front of the cards also. For this one, I decided to use three different sizes in graduating form on each side underneath. Just add a little extra linear element to this card front. Centering that as best I can without a ruler. And on this one, I scattered them a little more artistically across the front of the card, just in um, uneven numbers. So that's both of these cards. They came together very quickly. It's kind of nice to do two at a time with one design with slight variation. And this is how a card, a gift card fits in these little tabs. Just perfect. I love how that works out. I don't use this die set often enough. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you aren't subscribed to this channel, please take a moment to do that now and let me know in the description box what you liked best about this project. If you are interested in any of the products I use today, they are listed and linked in the description box below. And here are a couple more videos we thought you might enjoy. Until next time, have a great day. Bye-bye.